Yeah. All right, it's let's coming. go live, Christy. This is Cricket Spine Show. This is Christy's show also, too. Christy is a very good, uh, I want to call it, propaganda for health. She promotes it. It's her business. She lives it. She is outside early when I walk, when I drove in doing exercises. <laughs> An example. Sorry to tell people that. But it's, <laughs> but, you can tell people that all you want. <laughs> but you do a good job living what you preach. Yes. Okay? So... Christy, let's start with your background again. How did you start in with this? Just for a quick bio of people that haven't seen you for a while. Okay, so how did I start? You know, I'm a holistic health and mindfulness coach. Yes. And uh, really how it started is my middle daughter was really sick when she was young. She's now 21 and had a lot of health issues really from the time she was a baby. And uh, it was really my journey of um, trying to help her be healthy. I realized mm -hmm. if my kid was this sick, what's going on for, with other kids? and started getting involved in the schools. So I work in the Glendora School District with 2,500 kids a school year, teaching them healthy lifestyle lessons, teaching them how to love eating healthy and read yes. food labels and mindfulness techniques. And um, yeah, and then from there, I a friend of mine just said, well, why aren't you a health coach? And I went, I don't know. Why aren't I a health coach? Why don't I do that? <laughs> and, and the thing is, you know exactly how things work mm -hmm. in the body. You know how things go, so why wouldn't you, why did you hesitate per se? Why did it take some time to build it up? Oh. You know, I was for so long after my daughter had been sick really a lot when she was 11, and I, a lot of people would come to me, and I didn't know how to turn that into a business because yes. what I was sharing were words. So how do you make an income off of words? Doesn't make sense. There's <laughs> right? No way. Like, yeah. There's no way. And so I, I, I guess I just didn't know how to until I started researching that health coaching is actually a profession that people get paid for. Yeah. And I think by doing that, if I'm almost done sending this to my page too, a lot of it is when you do that allows you to now go, okay, I, I've helped myself, my daughter's doing well, my family's doing well, how do I spread the word? Yeah. How do I gain, sometimes in my sense, mm -hmm. the confidence to go outside my comfort zone and go, okay, I know my stuff, but are other people going to accept it? And yeah. it took people, sometimes it takes people a while to go, mm -hmm. she knows her stuff, I trust her, let's see if she can build up her reputation. Yeah. And what I've seen a lot, only for about probably three years now, you've done a phenomenal job doing that. Thank you. Not to flatter you, but I've seen everything yeah. you do online, I see what you put on YouTube, I see what you do on the weekends with different events you do too. It's become your life. Yeah. I think. Yeah. Beyond just being in the school. Yeah, setting. it's just what I do. Mm -hmm. Before, so there's not really a separation. No. Because I'm doing these things, I just sometimes get to do it with people. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Not as just well. your dog or just your family for one too. But yeah. you get a good job getting the word out and mm -hmm. really being consistent, what I've seen, with your message. Yeah. How do we help our kids healthy, how to keep ourselves healthy, yeah. physically and mentally. And I truly believe that health can be simple mm -hmm. and fun mm -hmm. and yeah, and it can fit into the cracks of our day. Yes, we need to go to work, mm -hmm. and we need to eat, and Dang we it. need to sleep, and stuff like that. But we can fit in these things that we can we can have time for fun, yes, and joy, and movement, mm -hmm. and well, and you get it though. You, you've yeah. you've you've done it with kids now with adults locally in your home for one too. Now you're spreading the word to different cities of how, and they're mm -hmm. telling you, hey, look, Chrissy, can you come and see us? We need yeah. your help. We need yeah. this. Yeah. You become the person, the go-to person, to understand how movement helps you, how it helps your mind, how eating well helps you. Again, it, it's simple things we put so quick that people don't realize people can do all the time. I gotta figure out how to, I'm my own videographer, so sometimes I forget about things. Yeah. <laughs> Probably now. Is how oh, so now we, we have a microphone. No, no we had one cool. before, now we have a better <laughs> microphone. Ooh. Uh, even, over, do I need that. to do anything with my phone? Nope, not actually, yes, you do. I do. Thanks for reminding okay. me. See, she, uh, she knows how I to I just want to make sure that we're on track, Good. right? So go to Crooked Spine Show. Okay. Facebook page. So I'm going to Facebook. Yes, you already see this. The people know already. Okay. So go to Facebook, go to Crooked Spine Show. Okay. I think, you're, I think you follow that already, too. I, I should be better. I think, think so. Good. I do. I have the thumbs up. There you go. So go okay. to that and so then go down to, to see yourself on the picture. So keep going down. Okay. There we go. Keep, keep going, going down. Going. Right there. Oh, oh, oh. And then and what do I do? Share. Press that. Oh, do I click on that? Click on that. Yeah. See Let's if that comes see. up. There's that. There you are. And now okay. 
Okay. Now what do we do? Let's go okay. back one actually. It's quick. Okay, I'm gonna let you do it. Oh, You're go. the master. Let's do it often. I'm about the master. <laughs> So now once she has to go further down, I think. There we are. Ah, we'll share. Now we can share. And then write a post. What do you want to say? Just live. Put it here. Watch this. Live with Dr. Tony. That's me. With the amazing Dr. Tony. I just put Dr. Tony. <laughs> I'm humble. I don't want to overwhelm myself. <laughs> Check it out. Oh. Good. Well, and I think that's one of the things that I've appreciated Post. knowing you. You know, it's under Abundant Harvest. Oh, yeah, okay. It's not under okay, my okay. site. It's on. So your your timeline. Yes. There we go. So go to. Is it on uh, my timeline now? No, Because it's still on Abundant Harvest. Yeah, news feed. Sorry. Cool. There, there we go. We go. Ah, I like that. Yeah. There we go. Okay. You were awesome. saying. So I was saying is in the time I've I've known you, I've appreciated that you you live exactly. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're always comparing our hiking notes. Right? Yes. Without what doing one on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> but that you are always representing health in every aspect of your life as well. And even when you have health problems like I had in the past too, mm -hmm. okay, what are the limitations? How do I work beyond the limitations yeah. to make sure I get myself as healthy as possible if I've had yeah. problems in the past? Yeah. And I, you know what? I, I think sometimes people think that just because you do healthy things, we're just going to be healthy all the time. No. But the fact is that our, there's just challenges in life. Mm -hmm that we need to have these tools and resources and surround ourselves with people that can be a helpful resource for us when we need it. And you go back to, yeah. when, when, especially when you have a condition or something happened to you, what worked in the past? Yeah. And who can I go to for advice because they know their stuff? Yeah. I mean, the main, if you have a health problem, for example, the, the good mindset of, okay, what do I have to do? Get a friend, get someone that knows their stuff and go, okay, how do I reach out and go, I need help with this. Yeah. Am I doing enough? Am I yeah. doing too much? And you know what I think is that a lot of times in people in wellness, they don't reach out for help. Yeah. And so yeah. I've, I love that you've kind of shared your story and mm -hmm. allowed people to learn and get educated from that as well. And I think a lot of it is when, when I do that or other people do that too, we, we all, when we have a business, we have something that we want to work on, we become sometimes very introverted. Okay, I'm going to work on this, we're going to work on this and get my information, get my material, whatever it is too. But, but, but I think how a lot of relationships like these, when we work together with someone else, another health professional, allows them to see and you to see, okay, what else can I do? Yeah. And it should be a win-win mm -hmm. so everyone helps everybody else out. Yeah. Because I have stuff that I know that may be the science background because I went to school and have a big student loan. Yeah. That <laughs> may not be verbalized because that's what we're around all the time. Yes. And, you, and you've been around the community a lot. How do they respond to what's going on? And what else do they need? Yeah. So having that blend, that mesh, allows the whole community to realize and get the benefit of having two minds working as one. Yeah. There's a way to say that, I guess. I just it's, it's, up my head. It's good stuff. In yeah. my head, I think it up all the time. <laughs> yeah. But it is interesting to see what the need is. Mm -hmm. and um, What's the need right now? What's, what's the next step going into this season of summer? Going into summer. Yes. Hmm. So, you know, summer, kids, if you have kids, mm -hmm. kids are home. Yes. So I would it's say fun. parents needing support for their own mental and emotional yes. health. <laughs> so we love our kids. Yes. And at the same time, it's having them home all summer can can be a challenge too because mm -hmm. you know parents a lot of times have to work, and and it's so so change, there's yeah. more. You know sometimes yeah. it's nice to have them go to school for a certain amount of hours. Does anybody agree with me? Yes, I think <laughs> right. we all do. Yeah, and certain so, ages, especially too. And, and absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And so I think that's not something we usually think about: is that what are we doing for ourselves as parents mm -hmm. to take care of ourselves in this time of summer? You know, we're so often looking at activities for the kids and things for them, but what are we doing to make sure that we're maintaining? Um, being mindful of our own health and well-being as well. Like you mentioned too, it's like I, I, if you have a job nine to five every day, mm -hmm. now you come home and like, well, kids have been home all day. Yeah. What are they doing? And, yeah. and as a parent, you go, no, it's my job to figure out, do I do a daycare? Do I do a summer camp? Mm -hmm. Have a relative stay with them? Have them go stay with the relative? Yeah. And, and what, what's a good, I guess, thing to start doing as a parent going now summer has started to look into what are good activities for parents to do? So can we back up even a little sure. bit from that? Sure, whatever you want to so do your show, I, <laughs> I love, in the, in the work that I do, I'm mm -hmm. always coming from a foundation of mindfulness. Yes. And I think that if we are putting in mindfulness into our daily lives, 
that's going to give us a place to start what's going to be best for each individual person Good. and each indiv individual family. And when I'm talking about mindfulness, it's actually taken me a few years to really be able to explain mindfulness in a way that makes sense. Okay. So can we play with this for yes. a minute? Yes, we'll play with it for a while. So when, we, when, we, when you think about mindfulness, like what is mindfulness? For me, it's being aware of what you're doing, what you're saying, what you're feeling mm -hmm. in the moment. Yeah, so really awareness mm -hmm. in the moment. In the moment. Yeah. And, and, and being not analytical, but more of just observing. Yeah. What's going on? Just there. observing what's there. Observing what's there. And so I love your definition. I made it Beautiful, my head. Beautifully said. Made it right? my head. And so a lot of times when I'm working with kids and families, I love them to understand the concept of mindfulness. And so when you look at the definition of mindfulness, they say mindfulness is being in the present moment. Yes. So then we've got to look at well, what does it mean to be present? Yeah. And so. How does we, your mind become present in that moment? Yeah. And so, you know. When we're in the present moment, our mind and our body are in the same location. Yes. So, so often, have you ever had the experience where your body's in one place mm -hmm. and your mind is somewhere else? That was about 10 right? minutes ago. <laughs> 10 minutes ago that happened. And it might happen too. in a few minutes as well, right? Yeah. So it's literally bringing the mind and the body into the same place. Yes. So when I'm working with kids, I always ask them, like, you're sitting in class and your body is here. You have physically gotten to school. Yes, made it. But where's your mind? And they're like, ah, mm. oh, it's not yeah. here. But Outside well, where is it? Squirrel. Yeah. But we time travel. We have the ability to go to the future mm -hmm. and to the past. And I would say the majority of time, if we're not aware of this, so often we're, you know, we, we have the ability to not be present. Yeah. That we can be with each other in our family but nobody's really present with each other. Why is that? Busyness. Mm -hmm. Everybody's busy trying to, I would say um, part of this is, is teaching kids. So this is one of the reasons I love teaching kids mindfulness. Good. That they understand, oh, you know, like right now my mind and my body are actually here. And that's why mindfulness movement is a big focus of mine that it's, we're And it's bringing. been going on for a bit, but hasn't really exploded per se. Yeah, um, we're really yeah. bringing, you know, both our mind and our body together. But yeah. I ask kids, you know, when, when you're at home and your parents are talking to you, it, you know, is your, is your, you know, your parents are talking to you, mm -hmm. where's your mind? And they'll say once again, like a lot of times it's not there. And yeah. they'll be like, well, you didn't tell me that. Like, I have and, no idea what you're saying. And said. then I'll ask them, now, when you're talking to your parents, mm -hmm. are there times that they're not present, that you're talking to them, mm. but their mind is not there? Yeah. And so I point this out so we can recognize this in each other. Yeah. And so often with parents, they're busy making dinner. Getting, they're, you know, I tell them they're so concerned with taking care of you that they're moving on to the next thing, but they're not really there. Yeah. So how can we, with this understanding as children and adults, you know, parents and child, to have this conversation about mindfulness and check in with each other and maybe yeah. even have a, you know, hey, let's get present. Let's look in each other's yeah. eyes and listen to each other and, and really being able to come from a place of um, hearing each other. Now, it's interesting with kids, I'll ask them, have you ever had an experience with somebody being really present with you? Yeah. And this is powerful. I'm usually doing this with nine-year-olds. Okay. Okay. And they will tell me, when somebody's present with me, I feel heard. Wow. I feel loved. I feel valued. They're nine. Yeah. And they get that when somebody is literally there focusing on them and talking to them in conversation, that is how they feel. And they probably smile at the same time when they actually yeah. say that, too. And so then mm -hmm. I'll ask them, have you been present with somebody else in a conversation? Yeah. And they'll say, yeah. And I'm like, and what did you notice? What did you feel in that conversation? Okay. I could understand them. Yes. I got to learn about them. I felt like that when I am present, like if I'm present with them, they're probably going to be present with me. Wow. And so I always ask them, like, don't you think we can make the world a better place just being present in our conversations with each other? And I think a lot of what you're talking about, too, mm -hmm. is, is how do we start with one-on-one -on -one then it's a nine-year-old and get that to go from one to two and yeah. two to four and exponentially get bigger and yeah. bigger. 
and knowing that we're not going to, you know, there are times in our days we're going to be, okay, I've got to get this done and those things. But just mm -hmm. being able to pause enough and understand yeah. what it really means to be present with each other and to teach our children that. And be the example for them, too. Yeah. It's and pretty I think powerful. Like, and I think the opposite of being present is going to be distracted. Yes. And how do we, how do we mm -hmm. reduce distractions in our, in our, our life and our relationships yeah. to make things more concentrated or more focused to be mindful yeah. and to be focused one-on-one -on -one or one-on-two, whatever it might be. Yeah. What are common distractions people, adults or kids deal with that make it hard to be mindful? Hmm. Well, I would say technology has definitely, you know, technology's here and there's so many benefits yeah. of technology. Yeah. And at the same time, how often do we go out to dinner and we see everybody on a phone? Yeah. And, or on a tablet. And so, so being aware of, and that's going to look different for each family. You know, sometimes, I'll tell you, even when I was on vacation a couple of years ago with my family, mm -hmm. my kids love Pokemon Go. Mm, so, fun. so putting on Pokemon Go and joining them yes. was so much fun and connecting. So <laughs> we could use the technology to connect and they help me make my character or whatever. Oh, yeah, yeah, and, yeah. and it was really yeah. fun. And so I just joined in with what they were doing and it was okay. very connecting and we got to be present together. And it's not something where you stop and do what I want to do. Let's do what the group wants to do. Yeah. Let's do what's fun for all of us. Or make it fun yeah. for me because I want to be part of your group. Yeah. And so I think, you know, I think part of life is slowing down and being able to create those moments where, you know, we can play a game. That there there might only be a limited amount of time, but what can you do with that time that, that you all enjoy? Mm -hmm. so. And I think a lot of it that you're talking about, too, is find that quiet time. Mm -hmm. that 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 less sound less distractions less visuals mm -hmm. and just and just giving yourself that peaceful moment to go okay how do i focus with justice yes to avoid the distractions of a tv a tablet a phone or even sometimes other people around you yeah absolutely yeah. and my recommendation to family well everybody in general is always get outside mm -hmm. yep yeah and even being mindful with yourself too correct yes find that quiet time by yourself to yeah. kind of get yourself a chance to mentally and physically recharge. Yeah, so you know, mindfulness is you know, being present in conversation okay. with, the, with each other, and mindfulness of our own health and well-being is really important. So when we're looking at parents during the summer, mm -hmm. I would say that self-care is so important. As parents, we so often want to take care of our kids, but we're, we're exhausting ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so we can't give what we don't have. No, but you can fake it. Yeah, well, people are it's really good at faking coffee. it, right? <laughs> it's called coffee and caffeine. <laughs> and so I always say, like, if you go to the store to buy oranges, yeah. and they don't have oranges, you can't buy them. Yes. So if you're overwhelmed and exhausted, it's really hard to give the love that you want. And so yeah. often, this is where we get frustrated with our kids. Uh, or anybody else around us for that matter, exactly. right? And so, so, so being able to check in and go, where am I? Have I had enough sleep? Am I hydrated? Do I need just a few minutes of quiet time and then I can do something with my family? But just that, that awareness that it's okay for us to need something yeah. too as parents and, and that check-in. So I love mindfulness as a place to check in with ourselves and be really present to what is it that we need. And what do we need so we can be more energized, yeah. per se, to give it to our family, Yeah, and our it's kids, not a selfish friends. thing. So oh. often, I will say, especially moms, yeah. think, think that they're being selfish if they put their needs first. Yeah. But like what I was saying, if, if we're exhausted, most likely we're going to snap at our kids mm -hmm. or, you know, we're, we're putting our own health at risk. Mm -hmm. And so just carving out those little moments where you can take care of yourself and re-energize yourself, relax. Then is it a good time? Is it good to have like a daily habit of doing that? Absolutely. Even and if you don't know you need it or not, just say, "Here's my time to get it to get myself sit, set for the day." Yes. Okay. So I am a big fan that we have a natural state of balance in our body. Okay. And do you remember our natural state of balance? I have I'm no quizzing idea. you here. I remember. I remember so, yesterday. <laughs> yesterday was rough. So, too, so fuzzy. the philosophy I work with is that yeah. our natural state of balance is very much like a tree. Okay. Right? So yes. a tree needs sunshine coming down uh, to nourish it. It's coming back to me. Right? And water coming up its roots. Yeah. And when it gets enough of both, it thrives. So it's really the process of photosynthesis. Got it. Okay. Yep. So we're like a tree. Just imagine. We're just out there yeah. blowing in the wind, the sun. right? <laughs> sun shining Love down. The sun. But we make warm energy in our body. Mm -hmm. It's meant to flow down to our abdomen. 
When it does, we digest our food properly. Our circulation is good. Yes. We go to the bathroom properly, which actually yep. is a huge problem for a lot of people. Yes. And we're balanced and grounded on our feet. So when something happens, we don't freak out and lose it. Yeah. That signals our kidneys to release water, goes up to our head, and it cools our head. So yes. our natural cool. state is a cool head and a warm abdomen. Yes, it's coming back. Yeah. Right. So, you know, part of what I teach and is on my YouTube videos and stuff like that is how right. to create quickly create a natural state of balance. So even yeah. if you only have two or three minutes, you can create that natural state of balance. So you've got that proper energy flow mm -hmm. in your body and then start your day. So even just giving yourself a few minutes to do a little bit of mindful movement, create that natural state of balance and notice throughout the day, is my head getting hot? Am I getting yeah. frustrated or anxious? Or mad. <laughs> well, by doing it, like you said, early in the, in the, in the day, where before mm -hmm. your day starts getting crazy, you build a way to tolerate that stress of the day that you may expect yes. or not expect. Yes. Well, there's yeah. probably always going to be something in your day. Yeah. Right? So. Or something. <laughs> and sometimes you, you don't expect it. So Especially if you have you kids. Oh. Yeah, life. If, if you're breathing. Yes. If you're in the yeah. real world with people mm -hmm. around you, things are going to yeah. happen. Yeah, so I, yeah. I really believe in kind of checking in throughout the day and then mm -hmm. using your little moments. Like when I was waiting for you to get here, I, I just did a little mindfulness exercise. Get your energy flow going, get your blood flow going, and you get do present. That unconsciously, because okay, have a minute, let me do my stuff. It makes yeah. Is it because you know it's going to make you feel better later? In that moment. Yes. I mean, in that moment, uh -huh. later. Yep. Yeah. But it, but you have that, you know, if I do this, and some people just, because they don't understand how it works mm -hmm. or just not aware, if you do something that makes you feel uncomfortable, especially initially, if you have the result in your mind where I've done it before, I'm going to feel this good afterwards, yes. want to get through that stuff so you do it every day Yes. as a way to feel better later every day. Absolutely. In that day, same day. And exactly. I'm a big fan of taking little moments, mm -hmm. like when you're putting gas in the car. Mm -hmm. You've got like three or four minutes. Mm -hmm. yep. Use that time to move your body in a way that feels good. Do something. Because it's going to create that natural state of balance. Just movement is so yes. good at getting our energy flow and our circulation going in our body. So yeah. I encourage people to take those moments. You're pumping gas in the car. You're waiting for somebody. Exactly. Sometimes even when you're talking to people, you can be yeah. moving a little bit and increasing your energy flow and your circulation in your body. Even and scientifically too, being the, the body when it has more motion, more circulation, it does relax more. Yeah. Your hormones do kick in to rebalance, get your body to relax. Yeah. So everything works So better. sometimes people think it's a little weird if you're like, you know, doing, you're jumping up and down while you're putting gas in the car. But I yeah. encourage you to try it. Yeah. <laughs> I have a video for that. Nice. Um. <laughs> See? She has videos for everything. But she, but she she has, she knows the benefit, the health benefit, mm -hmm. so why not do it? And especially if you are a busy person, you want to fit things in the cracks Anytime of your time. you can. You don't have to go to the gym. No. You can literally just do a little bit of movement throughout the day, and all of a sudden you feel more energized in your day. Yes. You're more relaxed. You're more patient with your kids. Mm-hmm. I take a walk. I walk my dog every day because she wants me to. Yeah. But because also because it does make me feel okay now, awake. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Yeah. Without yeah. that, I'm like, eh, maybe not as much. And you've got time outside. Yes. So important. If it's pouring rain, she still wants to go. You still get, you get hydrated, I guess, that way. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Like that. <laughs> but, but, and you understand exactly, okay, I've done it. The benefit is here, so I'm going to go and do jumping jacks at the gas station. I'm going to go and do this over here. Now, I don't I'm intentionally gonna... just drive to the gas station to do jumping jacks. I just do it when I'm putting gas did. in my car. But... Right, I want to go right there. But, you, but you, you've gone out of people's comfort zone and go, okay, this is going to benefit you, mm -hmm. so why not do that even though people may not accept it, but be outside the norm? Why is it good to be not the average person? Mm -hmm. Well, if we look at the average person, mm -hmm. yeah. mm, they're probably not feeling very good. No. Yeah, so we're going to need to, to push outside that comfort zone to, you know, one of the things I, I, I learned from one of the holistic doctors I work with is to... If, if somebody's not feeling well, you actually need to look at your environment. Mm -hmm. That our health is based on our environment. But if we look at our environment, we're seeing more and more people that are dealing with health challenges. Yes. So something's off. So I don't want to just be part of that. I, you know, I actually want to look at how can we improve our environment in general. Yes. But I'm definitely not going to be following <laughs> what someone else says to do. And that, I don't know if that's where you're going. But. It is. Part of it is is when our environment controls how we how we feel in our health, mm -hmm. It's a, it can be either a stressor or a benefit to our body. Yeah. So it's like looking at, you know, um, if you're at work, what's your work 
environment like and that's why here you've created a really nice environment in your office it's comfortable for people to come yeah. it feels really good so you've created a healthy environment for people it's not sterile yeah. someone had mentioned before I get offices are very sterile yeah. here's more like going to someone's not someone's home but a professional place yeah. like that you feel comfortable yeah but a, a lot of that's the energy you put into your you know and who you are yeah. as well Have and to so be. a lot yeah. of humor a lot of yeah. good humor you, you've got to have fun humor. And so, you know, and then we can look at our home in, you know, wanting to really support health in our own house is what do we want in our house? Yeah. What, how do we support health and wellness and, and uh, create a healthy environment within our home? And how do, we, how do we make ourselves, for ourselves and our family, feel good by having certain things in our home to yeah. make it more healthy, per se? Well, what would you recommend for that, for someone's home? What's a good common thing to have or have or common things to have? make it more a healthier environment well and once again that's going to depend on mm -hmm. somebody but I would say you know what's popping into my head is if we want a healthy environment we've got to look at what are like cleaning chemicals you know got for it. sure clean yeah. with things that are green cleaning vinegar and water does wonders Huge. things like that like if we can even just be aware of what are we putting into our environment that might not be our uh, that might not be healthy how can we put anything in our house that's actually going to support health so even on her know, body too maybe yeah skin lotions soaps mm -hmm. shampoo deodorant whatever it might be Absolutely. what are you doing to toxify or detoxify your body yeah and so then of course you know i would say healthy food is a wonderful mm -hmm. component especially Huge. summertime there's so much fun oh, healthy fresh fruit, fruits and things like that but if we're just looking at the environment are things cluttered does it feel like things have a, a home are you are you feeling like um you're you're kind of like having to do the same thing over and over again. Yeah. Like you're always like, clean that up, get that out of the way. Like, like there's just, just a tension. There. So how do we just even just look at our house and go, how would I feel more relaxed? Yeah. So is yeah. that having essential oils going? Is it having um, flowers on the table? I mean, you know, what is it that feels for good you, to, for, for that you? Person. Just because everybody's yeah. different. Some people like to have little knick-knacky things that remind them of things. Some people like things more you know simple, simple. just give me a plain countertop so i would go. say with families how do you create an environment that there's um fun and activity that there's things kids can grab that maybe spark conversation yes. and community so if you want the kids friends there how do you set your environment mm -hmm. so it's in support of for connection me, for me it's called food in the fridge <laughs> <laughs> there's food go eat it yeah but it's something to where you 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 make it more Homely in the sense where a homely can be healthy. Yeah. And it allows people to understand. I think when you have a healthy environment, you live there, your body can only get healthier. But if it's stressful, then you're going to have a stressful body too. Yeah. And it will cause issues with your health. Yeah. So it's, it's just, once again, kind of bringing that mindfulness piece mm -hmm. into, let's just kind of look at what's here and yeah. where does my house feel really good? Where do I walk in the room and go, oh, oh that feels good? Yeah. And where am I kind of like, mm, you know, your body's going to let you know. Body's intelligent. What it what it what it feels like. What yeah. do we know our body's more intelligent than Yeah. Else? You know, like an example, my son is eighteen now and he has a table set up in the garage. The garage actually used to be a bedroom. Got it, okay. You know, my nephew yeah. lived with us and we only had room in the garage. Works. Adapt, <laughs> and, adapt. and so he just keeps a space that his friends can come over whenever they want and they play Dungeons yes. and Dragons and it's just so fun to, you know, just have that, that comfortable space. For, for them to hang out whenever they want to. It just to. allows them, hey, like, do you want to come over today? Yes. Where can we hang out today? Versus going somewhere that may not be as safe or somewhere they can hang out, especially in the evening. Yeah. You have a safe environment, healthy environment for them yeah. in your house. And once again, if they want to be there later, yeah. it doesn't disrupt me. It doesn't matter. I'm so, over there. I'm yeah. over the house. Just yeah. keep it down over there. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, so. you're on track with everything you're doing. And we also talked about with summer, what are good foods transition to versus winter food? What are good food? What's a good diet? Not change, but a healthier state that's accessible with yeah. farmers market, with restaurants, with with overall just access to in the summer. I mean, I, I'm just a big fan of people getting to the farmers market. Yeah. Just go to the farmers market. Claremont has such a fabulous huge. farmers market. Is there one in? Uh, are we? Are we in Upland? Upland? Yes, we're in Upland. We're in Upland. Um, <laughs> Where there, are we today? <laughs> there was one in downtown or by the city hall. They had one. They've kind of had kind of a a melee of where to have or what to do. So it's kind mm -hmm. of been up and down. So. Yeah. I'd recommend that Claremont would be the closest for us for Upland. Yeah. And Rancher, I think, has ones. I'm not sure. You can probably find them online. Yeah. But having I, I them would in stores, say, too. 
Yeah, absolutely. Go online, find a farmer's market, go. I'm a big fan of people eating sprouts. Yes. Broccoli sprouts. Mm -hmm. You know, just they're, they're so much more nutrients dense. And like, who knew you could get better than broccoli? No. You know, but broccoli sprouts are even more, way more nutrient dense than broccoli. Very good for your digestive system. And so, eat like broccoli the, sprouts. I like that. The, bro the better broccoli. I'm going to use that as a slogan. Yeah, the so better broccoli? The better broccoli. Is, and you can put it in a smoothie. Huge. And you can put it in a smoothie for kids, and they don't even know the broccoli sprouts don't are there. tell your kids. <laughs> Spoil it for them. What you're getting into is the fruits, vegetables out there, they yeah. hydrate people. They have vitamins, yes. minerals. Yeah. They have things that you can't get during the winter sometimes. Yeah. In Southern California, we, we're really we're fortunate, spoiled. I think. We get food from everywhere all year long yes. for, every, for every season. Yeah. yeah. Want to take advantage of that. Absolutely. So fresh. Mm -hmm. As much as we can, beating, eating fresh. You know, know where your food comes from if you can. Uh, Vitamin City is another great. Do you I don't know, know if there's another San place. Dimas, yeah, San yeah, San Dimas. Yeah, yeah, because they get shipments twice. One of my patients told me I think it's on Saturday and, and Wednesday, Wednesday, I believe. Wednesday yeah. they have their fresh. It's almost like they're on the farmers market inside their store. Yes. So they're if you can't food. make it to farmers yeah. market, just go to Vitamin City. Vitamin City. And is there another place in Upland that's a really good? Sprouts. The only thing I'm thinking of Sprouts. I mean, Sprouts has got a, a good selection good as selection well. Always organic but or non-organic too. But beyond that, I don't know. Yeah, I would just say the more we're eating fresh. The, the, the more better. markets you know, and, and the more variety huge why and part of that is is that's what's building a healthy healthy gut mm -hmm. so i focus on building a healthy digestive system mm -hmm. and when we're eating fresh foods that especially if they're coming from a micro, from a farmer's yeah. market you're getting your prebiotics and your probiotics on huge. those foods it's huge. literally the fiber in those foods that are feeding your bacteria in your gut good bacteria. and it's literally the yeah. good bacteria in your gut that's feeding your cells we're not eating for our yeah. body we're eating for the bacteria that's breaking down the food that's turning it into energy for our body and if you've been on medications before you've kind of lost some of that so getting yeah. into healthier foods that are prebiotics and good yeah. bacteria allows you to rebuild that system in your lining of your stomach your intestines yeah. In your colon too. Yeah. A lot of things to, to really get, like you mentioned, to motility, getting you to go to the bathroom enough so you're sooner your body's healthy. Yes. You've got to clean stuff easy. out. Get it out of there, people. Yeah. <laughs> don't don't hold on to things, there. right? <laughs> and and why, do you, why do you kids, even adults too, avoid fresh fruits and vegetables? Why is it not part of their normal diet? Well, I guess we'd have to ask them. Okay. <laughs> but I yeah, would say sometimes, sometimes they maybe just don't like it. Mm -hmm. Or they haven't been raised with it, and I mean, I know parents. I talk to parents all the time, and they're like, "My kids just won't eat vegetables." Yeah. So, so what will they eat? Well, how do you they, bridge them to that area? Yeah, yeah. And so I would say, we want to make food fun mm -hmm. and enjoyable, and I never want to put pressure on kids to eat a certain food. You don't want to yeah. turn food into a battle. It's painful. Yeah, yeah. Torture. Because then, then they're associating that with it, yeah. Yeah. and so yeah, there's ways that we can put things in recipes and. And get creative. Many people are really good at that, but I, I really just believe that we don't want to, we want to make meal time very relaxed mm -hmm. and enjoyable. And and so if you are stressed, your digestive system is turned off, and you're not digesting your food. So even if they got that vegetable in their body, if they're in a stress state doing it, it's not going to do their body any good. So force feeding kids is not a good yeah, thing. I don't recommend that. <laughs> and with vegetables to start too, what's a good? Because some people are like I'll eat my vegetables, but I'm going to put all this stuff on there. To make it taste, I want to taste. Right. What's it? And again, the adult, same thing. Adults are sometimes the worst. <laughs> How do we get away from, say, for our artificial condiments, ketchup, mm. mustard, mm. Um, sauces, whatever it is, to even, even heavy yeah. salad dressings, to more of a natural way to eat it and also taste the food? Yeah, so I would say if like, you know, kids love ranch, Yes. right? So like I, I won't buy Hidden Valley Ranch because it's got MSG in it, mm -hmm. but you can go to Trader Joe's and get a better version of ranch. Good. So start with healthier versions of what they like. And, and what's a good way even beside Trader Joe's to find a healthier version? Is reading labels? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, and, and okay. that can be confusing as we were talking yeah. about before too. That can be a little bit confusing. Yeah. But if you're going to places you trust more, Vitamin City or Sprouts or Trader Joe's. Joe's. Uh, not that I'm going to say everything at yeah, yeah. Trader Joe's is healthy. Good. They sell products. <laughs> they sell. But you're stuff. not going to find um, MSG and partially hydrogenated oil and high fructose corn syrup. At least not that I know of. So name those, those three again that you kind of want to avoid. Okay, so you really want to make sure you're avoiding ingredients inside your foods. Partially exactly. hydrogenated okay. oil, okay. high fructose corn syrup. Good. And what was the other one I said? Uh, MSG. MSG. <laughs> I, I knew it was there. 
And why do you want to avoid those well, for one, you and your children? Yeah, I mean, you know, partially hydrogenated oil is, is just clogging our, our blood mm -hmm. vessels. Yep. And so that can be a little bit, bit tricky because I, I think they don't, if there's a tiny amount, I believe yeah. they don't have to report it. So yeah. that's going to be more like in your known labels. And a lot of kids' foods will have partially hydrogenated oil and um, high fructose corn syrup. Now, high fructose corn syrup is made out of corn, so you think, yeah. oh, that's gonna be fine. Cake, yeah. But it's, um, no. it's actually really hard on our liver, so we want to, it's, it's sweet, my understanding, now there's yep. probably people that are way more educated about high fructose I'll corn syrup. I'll confirm or deny this right now. Yes, yeah, um, but <laughs> that it's, it really hits our liver hard, and, yes. and so it's fructose, so it's hitting our liver harder, and we're already seeing that many children are, I think we're one out of 10 kids with a fatty liver under 10. Yeah. So, you it, know, it, I'd it, rather see natural sugar good. that's got more of a balance of, you know, fructose and glucose, but... But a lot of it is for taste, too. Yeah, and they put more of it uh -huh. in there. So, like, all so soda is high fructose corn syrup, generally, unless it's, a Huge. like, a Hansen soda. It's But it's a chemical... It, basically, what high fructose corn syrup, what I, what I remember is, it, it's a chemically altered corn derivative that doesn't break down your body very well. Yeah. So it sits it's, there it's for a while. It's not really a food No, and anymore. it becomes toxic. Yeah. Because your body sees it as an alien in your body, yeah. and your body needs more time to digest it, break it down. So you're using that, that ammunition, instead of doing something good for your body, breaking things down, they're having to work extra hard. Yeah. It's almost like being sick without being sick. Yeah. And you have high amounts of that. Yeah. So having someone eat something or drink something that is more healthy for them may take sometimes a week, two weeks, a month to get used to. Yeah. So give yourself time, especially as parents, to be the example. At that point, can you use something like olive oil, coconut oil, something that's more yeah. natural yeah. for taste, uh, for texture, Absolutely. than something that's more, that is more uh, a chemical or harmful to your body? Yeah, so I mean, I'd say looking, getting, you know, you can always find something mm -hmm. that is similar that's healthier. Yes. Right? So that tastes good still. So even like cereals, you can find a version that's yes. like Fruit Loops, but it's not Fruit Loops. I can't remember what they're called. Tropicos or it's something. It's called they Healthy use. Fruit Natural. Loops. <laughs> I mean, not that I'm it's, saying it's, it's your own brand yes, name. Healthy Fruit Loops. <laughs> brand name. <laughs> but I think it's, you know, there's brands that are using whole grains and then natural mm -hmm. colors instead of... Um, you know, the artificial color. So there's always going to be something, yeah. you know, I teach kids how to read food labels. There and so there's always something that's better than the sugary high fructose version. Um, although we still want to be moving them to fresh. So, you know, some but, it, but it's a bridge though. Yes. How do we bridge yes. them there? And like you said too, is can parents like kids, like you said, kids can understand labels, right? Mm -hmm. Can parents, can us parents understand labels even before you go to the store Hey, okay, what, what I'm looking for? What yeah. do I really want in this? Yeah. Can I go online before I go to the store and go, what do they have that I want? And can we match that so it's healthier for us and our kids? Absolutely. And you know, there's a, there's apps. Yeah. What these oh, apps? You know, we can bring this yeah. technology in there. That That's one of the apps that I use is called Food Scores. Okay. Food and you scores. can just okay. scan the label. Okay. And it will tell you its rating from, I believe it's 1 to 10. Okay. And so 1 being the best and 10 being the worst and uh, then it will tell you why okay and so so if you if, if you can spend time just as a parent myself and go to the store without your kids because it'd be crazy and spend time going hey my kid likes my kids like this i like this too be in that aisle in that area is there something that's healthier for me yes and can i use an app like that food scores to see if it is really healthier for me and by yeah, how much absolutely and yeah. it's fun to put your kids on the job of, okay, go find a healthy cereal. And yeah, it seems like it'll work. <laughs> kids like, I was in the you car. You know, the store could be this. an adventure. Yeah. You know, it could be a little field trip. Yeah, and sometimes. then they could see. It, it is really interesting when you educate, because I work with a lot of kids. Yeah. When you teach kids how to read food labels, they will teach their parents. They'll actually be, they'll, they'll like that responsibility. Yeah. Of, of going, I know something now. I was talking to a little, uh, a second grade boy. Yeah. Um, and he was telling me that once he learned how to read food labels, he went to the store with his dad. Yes. And his dad had grabbed peanut butter. And he said, wait, wait you second. can't just look at that peanut butter and put it in the cart without checking the label. <laughs> so they looked at the label and it had um, partially hydrogenated oil. Mm. So they put it back on the shelf and they found a peanut butter that was just peanuts. 
Mm-hmm. And then they, so he, he used what he learned yes. and then taught his dad, and his dad was willing mm-hmm. to, to learn with them, which was so cool. I mean, when we can empower our kids oh. that they can help make healthy choices for the family. It's pretty cool. They're sponges. Yeah. They, they can actually, they, they can handle more than we give them. Yeah. Every yeah. once in a while, I hear parents say, like, their kids going, oh, I can't eat that anymore. Can't eat I that know. anymore. Thanks, Johnny. <laughs> Thanks, Sally. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. So. But, it, but it, gives, it gives, I think, a good perspective. And once you've had that peanut butter, that jelly, that bread, mm-hmm. at that point, you know that's a safe food. It's yes. a healthier choice. So then you get used to, okay, mm-hmm. these are the brands I can buy. Exactly. And then you're not having to check the labels because you already know. Yeah, you, you've yeah. done your homework already. Yeah. As long as the source of carries that product, you have mm-hmm. no problem going back and it makes it more efficient. Yeah. Just to restock that healthy food. Yeah. Good. And vegetables and fun. fruits. What's a good way to make fruits, I guess, not taste better, but more, more able to, for kids to be, kids and adults to be enthusiastic, enthusiastic about them? I mean, smoothies are so fun. Yeah, they are. You know, in this time of year, yeah. there's just so many things, and they're cool, and so yes. that they're just cool tastes... they're cool looking, and they're cool, like, with taste, glasses, cool. Yeah, I mean, you can yeah. put it in a fun glass or whatever, yeah. but I, I think in general, kids will enjoy that, mm-hmm. and so, yeah, and, and let them be part of it. Good. So if they're picking... And they're helping. Yeah. There, there's more of a chance they're gonna want to try it. Yes. And so. They're more accountable per se. Yeah. You might not be able to stick as much green stuff in there yeah. if they're helping you make it. Oh, go to the car real quick. I guess in the car. <laughs> Kid, go in the car, then I come back and put them in there while you're. Yeah, but you while know, you're out teaching there. them to cook. So many people, kids do. They, they want to be involved. And so during the summer is a really great time to have them do some simple things like make a smoothie. And once they know how to make it. Oh gosh. You, you, You're off the hook. We, we want to transfer so that our kids yeah. know how to do these things, so that we don't have to. Exactly makes right? our makes our job as parents easier, but make more responsible. Yeah, yeah. And then they make a mess once in a while, like we do, but yeah, hopefully they clean up after themselves. <laughs> you know, Absolutely. And that's the thing is you you know you you deal with kids directly with them, so you understand how their mindset works, mm-hmm. how how you can help them to be more responsible and act out that way in a positive way at home yeah with and, their family and friends and ask them for their ideas kids good. are so creative nice. and they want to contribute and nice. they have really good ideas so you know even getting them involved and asking them well what do you think we what would you like us to make for yeah. this or what smoothie would you like to make and just get them involved because wow. you, you might be surprised what you learn yeah. I, I feel like they're the best teachers and they almost they and like you said once they're guided a certain way at that point, they'll like that and they'll want to continue doing that more and more. Yeah. They'll want to do that because yeah. it tastes, because over time it will taste better, taste good to them, hopefully. At that point, they're going to want to continue that routine of make known foods, smoothies, yeah. whatever it might be. And just expose them to different mm. opportunities. You know, interesting, I took my son with me to the farmer's market on Mother's Day. Okay. It's the only yeah. way I could get him there, right? Yes. Mother's Perfect. Day, come with me to the farmer's market. Yes. And the, the sprouts guy gave him a um, shot of wheatgrass. Nice. Now, if I would have said, hey, why I think you should do this wheatgrass, I don't know what the response would have been. It'd be like, there's but, no but, way, Mom. Right? But he did this shot of wheatgrass, and guess now what he, guess what he does every day? Oh. Shot of wheatgrass. He's out so there. So sometimes just them getting an exposure to a different environment and mm-hmm. someone else suggesting it other than their parents. Nice. So you don't have that voice in your head all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. It's just cool. No. Yeah. You're, 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 like I said, you understand how, how, the, how a kid's mindset works as a parent. It makes our job easier. So we don't have to find ways to communicate or act or or shop to maybe test the waters. You've yeah. done that hard work and understand how that works. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. that's usually so in the schools, I get to be a different voice than a parent. Mm-hmm. So sometimes parents will say, like, my kids won't try that at home, but it's a different environment when they're, we're in the yeah. classroom and we're trying different things. So for my own kids, I just have to find someone else to do it. Exactly. <laughs> Ship them somewhere. And, and with, with school environment, I'm seeing with school environment too, if, if a couple of kids like it, other kids will jump on board of that. Yeah. And they're with themselves, not with mm-hmm. a parent or a different environment. They're with yeah. people that they know every day. Yeah. And, and once again, when I'm working in the schools in like first grade, we make a salad for building strong bones. Mm, okay. So I bring in a lot of different green vegetables and they build their own salad. That's awesome. And, I, and they can eat it if they want. If they just yeah. want to build it and they don't like salad, yeah. they don't have to eat it, but yeah. I want them to have that experience. Most likely... They're gonna. They're so excited to eat it because they made it themselves. And they're they feel happy making it. So why not mm-hmm. not make 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 this eating of salad help, uh, happy for them? But that's the next step. Yes. Continue that happiness by enjoying what you. And made. if they don't want to eat it and they want to say, "Oh, I want to save it for my mom no. or whatever," fine. 
Sure. Right? Once again, we're creating an enjoyable, mindful um, experience around food. That food can be enjoyable. Healthy food can be enjoyable. And they go home knowing I did something and they talk Mm -hmm. to parents and go, maybe I do like salad. Let's try salad. Yeah. And see what they like or don't like. But they expand their taste buds and food that helps their body stay healthy. And I think it's really important, too, that kids are allowed to give their opinion about something. Mm -hmm. So I'll have them, well, what did you like on your salad? What didn't you like? So in one of my lessons, we make a quinoa salad together. Oh, okay. And I have them rate it and okay. tell me what they thought. And quinoa is a new food to a lot of kids. Yeah, even adults. Yeah. And so, you know, some of them will say, like, I didn't like it at all. And yeah. so I'll say, well, what would you do differently? And so they're getting to give their opinion and their feedback. Well, I would add chicken or I would add avocados or whatever it is that's there. Or, you know what, I just don't think that I would make yeah. this again. I just don't like the texture of quinoa. And so that they can say it, they're learning how to say it in a way that's, um, I guess, what I say, mindful again yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in that, but they, their opinion matters and that they can actually share what they think. I think so often kids are taught like, you know, don't say anything, you don't want to hurt somebody's feelings, yeah. but, you know, we want to give them an opportunity to be able to express in a way that's they can learn from that experience and and share how they feel as well. And they understand too, it, it's a safe environment where I can do that Yeah. If someone's asking me what I think. Yes. Someone wants to know. Yes, but I think that's not always the, you know, no. just kind of like, yeah. yeah. We have yeah. food, eat it, people. Eat it, yeah. Don't say anything bad, right? But, do a, you know, do kids say allowing like, them to just have an opinion. And you can't yeah. sometimes say they want like like French fries in their salad or things like that. And <laughs> I've never well, I've never had them say they want French fries, yeah. but I do bring in a. I think my happy meal is six years old now. Okay. I have a six-year-old happy meal. Wow, that's a long and time. So, that's yeah. And did you know there's no mold? I didn't bring it. Sorry, Please I could have brought it. Please don't. <laughs> and so um, it's amazing when I have that set out. How many kids yeah. go? Can I eat that? And you could six years ago. Your parents yeah, would probably I mean, kill me if they said it now. <laughs> Yeah. Get, I think you understand is exactly what, what kids, you give them an opportunity to be open about how they feel, what they like, what they dislike. Yeah. So they tend to, once you know that, how do you expand yeah. a little bit more? How do you expand a little bit more? How do you give them a little more room to work with? Maybe this will work with you. Maybe this, maybe this won't. Yeah. But can you find ways to expand their taste buds? And again, foods that helps their body stay healthy by doing your classes. Yes. It's great. Absolutely. Yeah. Good. So fun stuff. No, anything else you want to talk about? What what do you bring today behind you? I mean, I always bring my breathing ball. Have we yes. done, we've done breathing done before, before right? Why is breathing important? Well, why we is need, breathing in a healthy sense important? One of the ways is we can use breathing to just get present and mindful. Yeah, okay. And so just taking a couple of deep breaths can bring us into the present moment. Nice. And so often in life we're just busy and we're not breathing as deeply as we need to, to really get the oxygen deep into our lungs and to our brain. And so... When we're stressed, do we breathe relaxed or do we take short breaths? We, what do you think? Short, short I think short, short breaths. breaths, breaths right? Yeah, short Especially breaths. Especially if yeah. somebody's feeling like they're under stress. We have a lot yeah. of kids with anxiety, mm-hmm. and so they're really not getting that oxygen into their lungs and their, the oxygen into their brain. So, so I... They're I, used to being stressed, so they breathe less. It feeds that stress state in their absolutely. body. Absolutely. So they're teaching them how to breathe deeply mm-hmm. and through the yeah. abdominal area allows them to actually get their yeah. body to relax in that sense. And just making a habit of breathing. Mm-hmm. So I work with kids to just practice in the morning taking five deep breaths. We call it power breathing. Good. And in the, at night before they go to bed. So I, this might be new to you, and well, you might have seen this in some videos, mm-hmm. but I have kids put their hands here and here. Because yep. did you know we have three brains? You told me that before. I told you that, right? Yes. So what, our new what, science, what yeah. our new science, it's yes. ever changing, right? <laughs> is saying is that we have our brain in our head, mm-hmm. Our heart is a brain because of its own electromagnetic field. Yes. And then we have a dog-sized brain in our intestines. Mm-hmm. So when we put our hands here, and this comes from Dr. Daniel Siegel, who has a book called The Whole Brain Child, okay. The Yes Brain. So he's a therapist for families. Okay. And so I'm not making this up. No. She, I would think she would. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm just not she creating would, it yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah. But if we, we practice breathing with our hands here in a calm state, that if we get upset or our child gets upset and they've already practiced this breathing in a calm state, when they put their hands here, it's connecting their brain here, right? Perfect. To their other two brains. Yeah. It's really connecting the body and the brain together. So yeah. they'll, you just want to pause. So, so often when there's a stressful situation or, or a child gets angry or upset, if we can teach them to pause, right? Just put their hands here 
Yeah. Take a couple breaths. Just that pause will allow the brain here to kick in and they will have a different reaction than just automatically reacting. It's so often something reaction. happens and there's yeah. just a quick, they're not thinking, yeah. right? Yeah. And so if we can pause, we're allowing our brain stem to relax mm -hmm. and, and our prefrontal cortex to kick in a little bit there. So just teach it. Same thing for us as adults. Just That's huge. when something happens, just pause, give yourself a few breaths and then react. Kind of choose how you want to react. You don't want to go in fight or flight mode mm -hmm. to where you boom, you just attack someone. Or so you this is helping reaction. to calm the fight and flight Good. mode. So just hands here. That's yeah. the plan. And yeah. I think a lot of that will help. And if you teach a child that at a younger age, mm -hmm. will they be more yeah. non-reactive when they get older? Yes. Absolutely. It'll, it'll, so teaching children to pay attention to their body, that's a big focus of mine, mm -hmm. is that you know I will always do breathing with kids, mm -hmm. and yep. that's why I have the breathing ball. Usually we're breathing, you know, breathing in through our nose. Yep. There we go. And that's out through our ball. mouth. Yep. You know this ball is like 15 years old it now. Works. This just comes with, I love my it ball, works. right? It shakes everywhere. So you're teaching them to breathe, and then I have them listen what do they feel in their body so they're learning to pay attention to their body got it okay. kids are used to paying attention to what other people are telling them outside they're reacting the world, to right? that exactly you know what are they being told on the tv mm -hmm. or the internet or things like that but if they can learn to listen to their body mm -hmm. we have a gut feeling our body's yes. always you know you've had that experience yep. where you have a feeling in your gut okay. feeling in your heart yeah. Yeah. and and when you listen to that is it usually pretty accurate 51% usually more 51. than that. <laughs> Those are more than more than that, maybe. Yeah, and so we want to know that our body's communicating with it and how to listen to our internal wisdom so that when our yeah. kids are with a group of friends that are trying to do something that the, that child knows isn't right, yeah. they have the strength and the knowledge to listen to their own body. Not just it's react. It's really important. Yeah. No, you, you got that down. I mean, and you understand with application, with being with children, how that works. You yeah. see kids go from probably being anxious. Yeah. Overly excited even too, to where now they're more of a calm state. They can yeah. they can not overreact to things. Yeah. And we can teach kids about their brain. I told you we were going to do the handy brain. Do we yes, have time we for did. that? Yep, we have one minute. We have one minute. Uh, okay, sometime. so put your uh, hand like this. Yes. Make a fist, yes. right? Yep. And so this is going to be your handy brain. Once again, this is from Dr. Daniel Siegel as well. Got it. But you can teach this to your children. Okay. So this is your spine, right? Okay. Yes, I like right? the spine This thing. is a spine. You yep. like the spine. Yep. And if you open your palm, this is your brain stem, lower yeah. part of your brain right here. Back so what head. is our brain stem in charge of? Um, a lot of things. Yeah. So our Such automatic as, functions, yes. our breathing, our heart rate. It's also in charge of our stress response, our mm, fight, yep. flight, 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 freeze response. So when we're under stress, mm. do you go into fight, flight, or freeze? Usually. We can go into any of yeah. them, but do you have one you normally go into? I like the fight. Makes you go into fight? Oh, yeah, me. I yell. Me. You know, if I... <laughs> Do you yell or do you like uh, want to knock is, someone more out? More is like I try to get witty. Oh, you, you try to get witty with them? Okay. Get witty okay. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Got it. <laughs> so that's our brainstem right back here. That's the okay? reactionary response. That's the, the no. fight, flight, freeze response. Yeah. It's the oldest part of our brain. Mm -hmm. Fight, flight, freeze is trying to re re protect us, right? Tiger, so yep. sometimes we automatically go into that. Huge. If you put your thumb in, this is your limbic system, our midbrain, uh, yeah, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. So this is our memories and our emotions. Got it. So our limbic system and our brainstem love working together. They like mm. to have parties. You think Got of it. something, it triggers yeah. a fight, flight, freeze response, yeah, boom. right? And your brain is just going. Oh, yeah, right? high five, high five each other. Yeah. Now, if you curl your hand over, okay. top part's your cortex. Got it. Top part of our okay. head, right? Yep. Your front two fingernails right here okay. are your prefrontal cortex. Okay. So what's our prefrontal cortex do? I remember. I remember now. That is our rational brain. Rational our decision brain. Decision making. It's our decision no. making. So kids' okay. prefrontal cortex is not developed until they're 25. 25. Well, some 25. People, so we're some people healthy. I know are like 45. <laughs> Takes them a long time, like myself. <laughs> right. So, so as parents, we're helping our kids to develop their prefrontal cortex, okay. their rational brain. Good. Our Great goal enough. is to keep our brain integrated. So the mindfulness movements that I teach help integrate our brain. Uh, this okay, breathing helps to keep our brain integrated. Now, sometimes we flip our lid. Yep. And when we Humans. flip our lid, we get triggered by something. Yeah. We are no longer using our prefrontal cortex. We are no longer using our rational brain anymore. Yeah. We are using our memories and our emotions and our fight, flight, freeze response. Limbic system. 
So yeah. it's really important too, this is a great conversation for families yeah. to have is, what makes you flip your lid? Do you know there's certain situations that will kind of trigger you and you'll flip your lid? Yeah. Do you, can you name any of them? Don't cut me off on, on the road. <laughs> okay, okay, so if you get cut off on the yeah. road, you just may flip your lid. It's been a while, yes. Right, and then yeah. you, you just kind of what go you into your thinking? fight mode. You're yeah. gonna say something, Yeah. right? To myself usually. Right, <laughs> to, not to anybody else, no. right? And so it's really important as parents for us to know what makes us flip our lid and, and then what reaction do we normally go into. Mm, okay, so okay. being aware, we can put things in place oh, that okay. help keep our brain be integrated and to be a receptive brain versus a reactive brain. Got it. But okay. you can teach kids about the brain and they can tell you, Mom, I'm here. I'm about to flip my lid. Yeah. Oh, so what do they do? Let's do our mindful breathing or get outside, or whatever those tools whatever are that you do. have. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I have some suggestions on my, my yeah. YouTube, right? Yep. And so so that they can, they're learning, oh, I'm yeah. about to flip my lid, let me do something that brings it down here. They're more self-awareness, more mindful of their own yeah. bodies and emotions. So, so this is a great conversation. There are videos by Dr. Daniel Huge. Siegel on okay. the handy brain that you can, you can refer to. But this conversation of understanding the brain, knowing what our triggers are mm -hmm. as parents, and helping our kids understand know what their triggers are that yeah. flip their lid, then you can you can work with that and put things into place to help keep, keep your brain more in. integrated. Well, a lot of it is you're you're understanding that okay if if a kid can be trained and not be trained, but learn exactly how yeah. their Aware, mind works actually, right? and how to react to the environment or people around them, it yeah. allows them not to be explosive. Yeah. Allows adults not to be explosive. So kids can be taught about their brain at four and five years old. Wow. Imagine having that, like, imagine if we would have had this yeah. when we were kids. I've been so much smarter. I've been wow. like a cardiologist. Yeah. <laughs> a heart doctor, I don't know. <laughs> that thing yeah. is, and again, a lot of the show's going to be, we're going to put show notes out there, two resources of her, of Christie's YouTube, Facebook. Find that information that helps you understand yourself, but also your kids and your family. How do you keep yourself mindful on your own, and then, then promote that to other people around you, and have an environment that promotes that also? Yeah. Along with eating, along with your activity, your movement. What can you yeah. do? And little things, again, start very small, I think, and build what you can do daily to get your body to get a little healthier every day. Yeah. And have fun. Always have fun. Laugh. Always laugh. Yeah, it's really I important. I love her laugh. That makes my life easy. Yeah, I know it makes your videos hard to... No, it's actually it. I fixed the volume now, so it doesn't, <laughs> no. doesn't rain. But you're genuine about what you do, which yeah. I love. That's the best part of it. Yeah. All right. Well, thank, thank you for being on the show. It's always fun. We'll put it everywhere. I'll put your stuff. I'll put her stuff on YouTube afterwards to this show, but also go to Facebook. Go to her Facebook. Put her. I put a link on my mm -hmm. show and my personal page, too. Understand Christy's there to help you and your family stay healthy. Get her tips. Understand that she does other other talks on her own too, as a business side. But understand she understands how the body works, the mind works, and works together. All right. Thanks for watching the show. Okay. That's it. That's all there is. That's all we do. <laughs> Very simple, right? Yeah.